the atmosphere of college football here at Towson now. The fans came out in droves. The Dr. Tiger was out. The cheerleaders were out. The dance team was out. It was almost like the perfect college football atmosphere for an opening day game, despite the rain. Jason uh -huh. Giambi is absolutely right in that A-Rod doesn't get the hits, but come on, Giambi. You are the last person that should ever call anyone out. In the last month, you have been under 200 for your batting average. Get yourself straight before you want to point out other people. On top of that, you just finished using steroids. Get back on the juice, hit some home runs, then you can call A-Rod out. <laughs> right now, keep your mouth shut. They had the best record in the NBA, darn it, 67 wins, and he adjusts to fit the game of an eight seed in, in game one of the playoffs? Are you kidding me? He goes small ball with one of the best small ball coaches in the game? That's crazy. Welcome to yet another edition of the Towson Game Day Keys to the Game. There are several things that Gordy Combs and company is going to have to do if they want to walk away from this final non-conference game undefeated so far this season. So here are my thoughts. Spitting through a player's face mask, that's one thing. Throwing a punch is another thing. But to grab another player's testicles, that's where I draw the line. That is sickening, and Evans should be suspended for next season, seeing as those playoff hopes are coming to an end. When you break down this passing game, it's pretty interesting. You see they go five wide receivers, count them, one, two, three, four, five over your screen. Look at the top right of your screen. See number three? That's Marcus Lee. He's going to run a flare out, which is going to open up number five at the top of the screen to run a slant right over the middle. See, he runs the flare freeze. You see the Morgan State defense all looking at Marcus Lee. That one second of hesitation is all you need to allow Dayron Arnold to slip in behind the cornerback at the top of the screen and get the touchdown pass. Schaefer delivers the ball on the money for the easy touchdown. Mm -hmm. Now, what happens, Simon, if you cover Dayron Arnold and leave Marcus Lee? Take a look again. Marcus Lee again, number three on your screen. Dayron Arnold, number one at the bottom of your screen. Marcus Lee's gonna flare out, and the two Morgan State defenders are both gonna go with Dayron Arnold. Freeze it there. You see both guys doubling up on Dayron Arnold on a crucial fourth down play. That allows Sean Schaefer to throw the ball on time once again. Marcus Lee over the flat, that picks up the first down, and just like that, Towson's moving the chain. Here's the stickler. It's Towson's homecoming, as we said earlier. So the stands are gonna be packed, the fans are gonna be rowdy, and like I said all show and all last week, it's gonna be another barn burner, ladies and gentlemen. Because if this team is able to do both things, you're in trouble. At least eliminate one. Eliminate the ground or eliminate the air. You cannot allow both. That's ridiculous. I mean, my grandmother could have run over this team last week. It's the wrong time for Donovan McNabb to come out and say this. He couldn't have picked the worst time. The Eagles are 0-2. They've already lost to the Green Bay Packers, who apparently are okay this year. They've already lost to the Redskins. They aren't putting up big numbers. This is the absolute worst time because now it looks like he's just looking for a cop-out on an excuse when the truth is there is some merit to what he's saying. Yes, black quarterbacks are scrutinized a little bit more, but let's not forget the fact that black quarterbacks have come a long way since the times of Doug Williams. Towson is 3-0 at home this year, starting for the first time since the 1980s. Meanwhile, Temple has only played one road game this season, and that was a nine-point loss at Kent State. And quit for the season. Yes, Sean Alexander may only miss one game, but I got five bucks saying he's going to trip, fall down the steps, and break his right fibula. Yes, I said fibula in a couple of weeks, Darnay. Who have decided to test the waters of the NBA. Here's where I stand. If you can't swim, why test the waters? Newsflash, guys, you couldn't help the Terps get by in Manhattan in the first round of the NIT. What in the blue hell makes you think you're ready for the NBA? Speaking of the NBA, Allen Iverson and Chris Weber decided to show up five minutes before tip-off of the team season finale. Since they weren't playing, they assumed it was okay. First of all, it was Fan Appreciation Day, and the two superstars weren't playing because they were sore? That's ridiculous. You collect a paycheck to play, and you've got the entire postseason to rest since you didn't make the playoffs. That was a selfish act by both players, and there's no real way to defend them. That reminds me of a story a wise old lady once told me. There was once a man in Antarctica who came across a frozen snake, so he made a fire to unthaw the serpent and set a pot of warm milk next to the snake so he could drink it when it woke up to warm up. Then the man fell asleep only to be awoken by the snake sinking his teeth into his leg. The moral of the story, you can't change the nature of a snake. So Philly fans, I need you to remember, AI will always be AI, and there's nothing that's going to change that. The same could be said for Ron Artest, who was suspended for hitting Manu Ginobili last night in the playoff game. He should have been suspended for guaranteeing that the Kings, the AFC the Kings, would win the NBA Finals. Of course, because of the fact that he's coaching in South Bend. Of course he's on the hot seat. He has to be on the hot seat at this point. Notre Dame would fire their own mothers if they were losing. It doesn't matter. Every fan would be screaming for his own mom's head if that was the reason Notre Dame would lose.